In this video, we're going to take a look at some design guidelines across both iOS and Android. We have a follow-up video where we take a look at material design as well. So, first of all, some iOS design themes, and I have my reference up here. I'm paraphrasing simply from Apple's website. So, first one is clarity. Text is legible at every size. Icons are precise. Subtle adornments. So, in other words, we don't want to overcomplicate the user's view of the situation. Show them only what they need and when they need it. Think about economy of words. How much can we say and how little text? Next, we have deference. Fluid motion and crisp interface that helps the user interact with the app. So once again, think about minimizing the widgets on our screen. Do we really need to have a save button? Or can we automatically save and allow the user to go back in a version history and choose a point where say, hey, I didn't mean to make that, but I can always go back. So how can we minimize the unneeded icons on the app and focus exactly what the user wants to do? Then we have depth, which is distinct visual layers. We'll see more of this when we discuss material design, but if you take a look at an app that has a navigation drawer like we have here, you notice that the navigation drawer pops out and it shades what's behind it, and then we can click on what's behind it to go back to that location. So this is a good example of having some distinct visual layers. Also, you see a subtle shadow, shadow under the floating action bar, and when I click it, you can see it, it kind of, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a shadow that appears there as well. So clarity, deference, and depth. Some other uh, design principles, consistency. So we want to use consistent design across the entire application. An example is if uh, this is the uh, Android Studio Editor. Uh, if I want to make a new icon in Android, I can simply right-click and I can say New, and then I can say image asset. Now the reason I point this out is that you see clip art. There's a library here of clip art that's usable and ideal for a mobile application. But what's interesting is that this clip art library is provided as part of Android Studio. So that way an icon that you use to indicate Wi-Fi will be similar to what somebody will see in another application to indicate Wi-Fi as well. So consistency not only within your app, but also consistency with other apps as well. Now feedback's very important, but try to think not of showing a message box, because remember, a lot of times a user might be using your app while not actually looking at the app. So we want to give different forms of feedback. We want to vibrate, change color, do multiple things preferably, but not necessarily have a very verbose message box. An example I can show you from Plant Places Mobile, when you GPS a plant and you hit save, you get some immediate feedback here because the screen turns green. It'd also be a good idea to vibrate the phone. Keep in mind that different people have different perceptions of color, so we want to back up one kind of feedback with another. Okay, user control, suggest for me, but let me make the final call. This is big with both iOS and Android, because what we're saying is, if possible, can we do an autocomplete? So can I start typing a plant name and the plant name autocompletes, or can I start typing something like, just one moment, uh, if I start typing a location, like the Cincinnati Zoo, notice that that will autocomplete and I can select it. But maybe we can even go one step further and say, can we just use my latitude and longitude, determine where I am, and then we suggest locations that are near me. If you use Facebook, you're probably used to this when you want to check into a location or do something like that. Okay, metaphor. Uh, metaphor, this is big in material design where we have the concepts of layering in an application. Also, think about our icons, like a save icon as a disk, open file as a file folder, take a photo as a picture of a camera. Now, I could probably make these images a bit bigger and make them consume, make better use of that button real estate, but we know that these things are metaphors, and one of the things that we say in Android design also is that pictures are faster than words. So I can recognize a save button quicker than I can read the word save. I can recognize a pause button quicker than I can read the word pause. Also, we know that images don't have to be translated. Next, aesthetic integrity. Is the app appropriate for the function? Something like a gaming app is going to be, need to be very much interactive and show a lot of splashes around the screen and explosions going off, stuff like that. Where uh, maybe something like a TSA pre-check needs to be very functional and it needs to say, okay, uh, here's my user, here's the flight they're on, here's the date, here's the gate. Very much, very much functional. 
direct manipulation. We want to we want to engage directly with the uh, object on the application. So if we take a look at search by color, and this screen needs a bit of updating. I need to replace some of these texts here with with pictures. But uh, open existing image. Note that it shows a gallery view of any, any images that you already have on your device. So you can interact directly with those images. When you open the image, and this is kind of a monochrome image, but when you open the image, it shows up to 16 of the most frequent colors on that photo. And then you can directly pick one of those photos and notice that it shows the name of a plant and a photo of the plant as well. So direct manipulation, we want to be able to touch the images directly. Okay, uh, with that, we'll go ahead and stop the video here and we'll move on to some user in experience guidelines in our next video. I look forward to seeing you then.